These are perhaps the oldest group of mountains in Western North America, the Selkirk Range, an enormous silent island of rock encircled by the Columbia and Kootenai rivers. They occupy almost the entire Kootenai district of British Columbia, an area very nearly as large as England. They were old when the rocky mountains lay still unborn beneath the oceans of ice which covered the earth. They are 500 million years older. Despite their great age, the Selkirks have a very brief history. Man has walked within these awesome valleys for scarcely more than 80 years, but man has known of these mountains for much longer. The stubborn barrier of the Selkirks in the late 1870s was almost responsible for the British Columbia government seceding from Confederation and becoming a part of the United States of America. Ironically, it was an American who was to keep the Selkirks Canadian. On May 28, 1881, a small group of men led by Major A.B. Rogers, a Canadian Pacific Railway route finder, skirted the Asilowit Glacier in what appeared to be a pass. Rogers had found the long sought after route through the Selkirk Mountains. But Rogers could not foresee the 30 year struggle to keep the pass open or the fateful significance of the slope he stood on. Major Rogers had discovered the only feasible passage through the 30,000 square miles of the Selkirk Mountains. Construction camps like Rogers Pass Village were thrown up. Hotels and restaurants gave the pass a Klondike look. By 1884, 4,000 men from every nation on earth were working, helping to build this railway through one of the toughest mountain passes in the world. The Selkirk section required some remarkable feats of engineering, including 13 state-of-the-art bridges, and four miles of snowsheds. It was incredibly tough work, with an average wage being $2 a day. During the winter months, the working conditions were at times unbearably tough, and many men quit. Nature was out in full force with an average snowfall of 50 feet annually. One group was conspicuously absent from the work crews from the start. This group was the native Indians. The Indians were well aware of the Selkirk Mountains, and they knew of the powerful snow spirit that resided in them. When they learned of the CPR's ambitions, they warned of these snow spirits and ominously cautioned about white death. The CPR was determined to complete the transcontinental railway and it forged ahead, disregarding the natives' advice. Through the winter, avalanches hindered progress and scared the work crews. The snow spirits that the Indians already knew were making themselves known to the white man as he persisted in building the Transcontinental Railway. On November 7, 1885, the symbolic last spike was driven into the ground at Kragalachi. The CPR had apparently conquered the mountain forces of Rogers Pass. The first transcontinental train left Montreal on June 28, 1886, and successfully navigated the pass on its way to the west coast. Due to the extreme grades of the pass, 
the CPR took away the dining car and built a hotel instead. Glacier House soon became the mountaineering headquarters in the West, with the Canadian Alpine Club holding its first organizational meeting here. In 1899, mountain climbing came into its own with the arrival of two Swiss guides, Eduard Fuss and Christian Hessler. Nature kept plaguing the railway, and throughout the winter, it was always a battle to keep the lines open. The men who worked on the line knew all too well what to expect. No, it's a, it's a disgusting sight to see a slide. No, horrible. I've seen lots of them and they seem to be alive. The winter of 1910 was a particularly rugged one. On the evening of March 4th, a rotary crew was busy clearing the tracks when suddenly an enormous avalanche roared down Avalanche Mountain, killing 62 men. The mountains were angry. And there was only one man come out of the whole thing alive. His name was Billy Lachance. Oh, it's just like if there were tons on top of me. Now, all the time I'm in that, I don't get one breath because the snow has got packed right tight to my face. And then this pressure come on. Everything was just dead. Nature had vented her displeasure, and man was the victim. Between 1885 and 1911, over 200 people were struck by white death. The cost of man's determination to overcome the forces of nature. These days, the spirits of these men and women are still present at Rogers Pass. The CPR finally conceded that the pass was unsafe and set about building the eight kilometer long Connaught Tunnel, eliminating 16 kilometers of the most hazardous railway line in the world. So while society continues to manipulate nature, so do people continue to enjoy nature. Society keeps pushing its frontiers. People keep pushing their frontiers. And pushing. And pushing. Society's materialistic concerns are increasingly reducing people's spiritual connection with the natural world. From the summit of any mountain, we see into nature and into ourselves, an experience of communion with the spirit within. We are all climbers, and we yearn to achieve the summit of our own souls. Yeah. 
the determination, labor, and sacrifice of the last 100 years at Rogers Pass has provided us with a gateway into the mountains of British Columbia. Now these spectacular mountains are there to enjoy and commune with. Thank you. 
we must accept and harmonize with the forces of Mother Nature, knowing that ultimately we are one with these forces. Through our passionate interaction with the mountains, we reach our own enlightenment.
Only when we leave ourselves open to the natural world can we then reach the next plane of consciousness.